The group of the world's seven most advanced economies, the G7, is launching a set of public policy principles for retail central bank digital currency, CBDCs. Hi, it's Mine Crypto here. I hope we're having a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world. Remember, this isn't financial advice. Always do your own research. And today we're going to talk about quant, but before I do, please subscribe, please hit that notification bell for more updates. And a happy Father's Day for anybody in the UK because it's Father's Day today. So a happy Father's Day to me. <laughs> so looking at the crypto bubbles and especially a quant, we're looking at minus 10% so far on the day. We are at 101 dollars and we are down 0 0.1 in the hour. 1% in a week, 115% um, up in the year. So not looking so good with regards to the price damage that we've seen. 10% since Gilbert offered up some great news the other day with regards to the Bank of England and the biz. Now, I'm going to be quite honest. I was looking through some of the uh, Twitter feeds and I noticed this one. Who the F sells Quant at 115 after the announcement that came out yesterday? No, seriously, who? You have to have a sub 75 IQ to do that. I don't understand. As you can see here, it's just continue dropping and drop down a little bit further. What was noted here is that actually Quant sold out $35 million and they do this quite regularly as well. Um, and to be fair, they need the funds to be able to continue the project, continue building. It doesn't bother me as much. I'm holding this long term. I get it if you're a short term trader, you know, it can wreck you. But the fact is the team have to keep rebuilding and keep building as they move forward. This is good news, really. The fact that they are using some of the funds to reinvest within the business. And also some very interesting tweets are coming about. Uh, and I think this has... Um, quite good sentiment to it because reading here from a philosophical carrot and it says crypto is dead the doomsayers are once crawling out of the woodwork at this time everything is doom and gloom but this is actually expected happened before and healthy a short thread of history below what is possibly coming in the next next months or so and years now, what you've got to understand is this is cyclical and this is this explains this very well. As at Tasha Labs has explained before, so far everything in crypto has mirrored that of the dot-com run-up and subsequent crash in the late 1990s. That crash was painful, but it was beneficial to the ecosystem in the long run. As you can see, there was a big jump up and then a decline. And all across history, emerging technologies have virtually followed the same four phases. This is so interesting. First, they emerge as the nascent technology adopted by a couple of diehards and overlooked by the incumbents. Then comes the widespread frenzy. The crash that follows is inevitable. Importantly, after the crash, there's an institutional recomposition. This means that the incumbents and the ones that survived the crash assimilate in a more sustainable way that emerging technology, this ushers in the golden age, true widespread and sustainable adoption. Not only for the adopt com bubble, this has happened many times across history. The invention of railroads, canals, common stock, mass production, a la Henry Ford, all saw frenzies, crisis, reconsolidation, which makes you think what actually people need to realize is this is absolutely no different at all. Such crashes and crises are better for the ecosystem in the long run. We trim overgrowth to make the garden better. We prune weak branches to, to make the fruits tastier. Love this analogy. And we clear our computers of junk to make it run faster. An ecosystem benefits more from the removal of bad actors opposed to the addition of good actors. Better to remove parasites than to keep planting more crops. Better not to consume unhealthy foods than consume more healthy food. Crypto needed parasites removed. Um, so. After the crash, crypto will reconsolidate and see institutional recomposition, become stronger than before and go through the golden age. What then? Pick winners, the ones that will survive and actually help the ecosystem become stronger. 
as I've covered before, look for things that benefit the entire ecosystem that connects everyone. This fights entropy and helps rebuild a stronger, more sustainable order. Quant Q&T is a solid pick for something like this. And we already know, you know, so I'm not frustrated. I know from this information here, it just confirms everything I already knew with regards to real use case. And that's exactly what Quant has got. Remember, none of this is financial advice. You've got to do your own research. And a great tweet from SanNL11 on Twitter. They were not lying. And you can see here, the Bank of England digital currency be like. Polls with 1,200 participants shows how a CBDC meets future payments. And this is important. Our important takeaway, the new RTGS, I talked about this the other day, will be interoperable with DLTs using API platform. And then we see this. Average daily RTGS, settlement values and volumes, 748 billion. That is huge. <laughs> and that's the daily average in quarter one in 2023. That's just the daily average. We see Gilbert say here, in line with our token utility paper, all licenses are paid by, a, by each party, plus all transactions that go through Overledger are paid in quant. And there you go, $1 trillion daily. And that's just in England. <laughs> That's just in England, one place. And obviously a lot of people then say, well, when, you know, is this going to be, is this going to be adopted by other big international banks? The devil's in the details, says Tokenizer. From the BISORG Project Rosalind document, Quant Overledger clearly stated as the core solution while also expanding on operations of multi-central bank interactions with APIs. So we can see here, the project used Overledger technology to accelerate development. It also enabled the project team to explore how API could work with different types of bank ledger. So absolutely huge. And this is backed up by a document that I found this. Joshua Rosenberg, advisor at the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. Project Rosalind demonstrated that a well-designed API layer can enable a central bank ledger to interact with private sector service providers to safely provide retail CBDC payments. The API layer can be a ledger agnostic so that central bank ledger choices can be abstracted. The API layer can also be application agnostic and set a core API functionalities can support a broad and diverse range of use cases. Through collaboration with the ecosystem, the project has also demonstrated potential of a CBDC system to enable robust ecosystem to foster innovation and to help meet needs of more digitalized society. As you can see here, <laughs> they're talking about it. So this isn't just the Bank of England, um, as we can see here from Joshua Rosenberg who just happens to be an advisor at the, the Bank of New York. So it's all very interesting stuff. So for me, if it drops below the $100, I'll buy some more. A good opportunity to dollar cost average and a good opportunity for other people to buy in because that's what we want. We want to build this community. For me, I love Quant. I love various other projects that are connected to this. I am a utility man through and through. So there you go, guys, just some news to get it out there, just to settle any anxiety that you might have. If you're in Quan, you're in it for the long term. Remember, please subscribe, please hit that notification bell. None of this information is financial advice. I am some guy that likes to provide you with the news. All the best, and I'll catch you later. Remember, this isn't financial advice. Always do your own research.